Welcome to the Crimson Engine. My name is Rubidium. This is a BTS for the feature film, and today we are testing lenses. Um, we shot a bunch of different lenses. Mainly what I wanted to look at is in a grand sort of scheme of things, do I want to use primes or do I, do I want to use zooms? We are shooting probably on the Canon C200, so we're Super 35. And what I did was go to Sigma here in Burbank and get hold of uh, their 17 to 35 cine zoom and their 50 to 100 cine zoom and individual primes of those same lengths. So what I did is shot the actress um, with the zoom and with the prime. And then for reference, I also used uh, the Rokinon Cine Primes. Um, my 85 is actually pretty sharp. My 35 or 24 mil, um, I bought off Craigslist and you can hear the elements moving around inside it. So it's a piece of crap, but it's good as a base level to see um, what you're paying for when you're buying a $5,000 lens. I also used uh, this lens, um, the 17 to 55 2.8 um, Canon Zoom. Just sort of wanted to experiment with, you know, what am what am I getting going down the path of the the more expensive five and six thousand dollar lenses, and then once I do, shooting at you know f two or two eight, um, which is where we'll probably be for a lot of the film to give it that cinematic shallow depth of field. Uh, what compromises I'm making shooting with zooms. Obviously zooms are a lot faster to use. Uh, you don't have to, it only takes a minute to swap a lens, but it takes a second to do that and change the focal length on a zoom. You also have a lot less stuff to carry around. You're really only carrying around two lenses if you're shooting on there of the Sigma Cine zooms. You do lose one stop. Um, the, all the primes are T1.5 and the zooms are T2 but I don't really see us shooting at T1.5 anyway uh, because the depth of field is so shallow that you, you know, one eye is in focus and the other eye is uh, out of focus. They are probably very useful if you're shooting uh, night shots or you want a lot of light in the camera. As you can tell, winter has come to California. I don't have heating in my studio. It's a converted garage with a cement floor. It's very cold. Not very cold for the rest of the world, but it's very cold for California. So let's jump in and I'll talk about the differences between the two images that I got on between the Sigma zooms and primes, and also how they compare to, you know, the regular lenses I shoot these kind of vlogs with. So here we are in Resolve and I've lined up a bunch of clips that I shot with the name of the lens, the f-stop um, and the ISO underneath. Pretty much ISO 200 across the board, except for uh, couple lenses which we'll get to. So how I tested this was I had a couple of the Voyager, digital Sputnik Voyager tubes. I think there was three of them sort of just off to this side. And then I had a piece of reflective material on a C-stand here as Phil. Oh, I had a three quarter backlight um, for her hair in this setup. So the first thing I did was put on our Sigma Prime 35 mil. Um, lovely, you know, beautiful bokeh here. Not distortion on the face, it's just not very, not the most flattering single shot. And I had India, um, I'll link to her in the description. So I had to look into the camera originally and then look to the side, which is more indicative of, uh, you know, how you shoot a movie. So this is a Sigma 35 prime. Here's the zoom, which, and as I go between them, you sort of see there's not that much difference. The bokeh in the um, zoom, if we, if we zoom in, really big, you'll see that the bokeh has this sort of texture to it and in, that it doesn't have as much of in the in the prime, but pretty small difference uh, at, at F2 uh, on the 35. Nice image though, I like the color contrast, um, I like the, the look on the C200. I mean, these are all raw, so I could have done whatever I wanted to them, but I tried to keep them universal across the board. Um, here is the same shot, but with the Canon 17 to 55. Um, this is at f2.8 and I went up to ISO 400 because this is the maximum um, f-stop of this lens. So to, to keep something across the board, I wanted to keep it at, you know, wide, this one's wide open. So you see straight away that, you know, this lens is softer definitely than even the, the zoom, much softer than the, um, than the Sigma Prime, which is what you expect. But it's not soft 
in a you know out of focus way it's kind of almost kind of to the skin um it's just out of focus it blends in a lot of her skin texture um it's a little bit more cosmetic it's a little less gritty and uh, punchy than the sigmas but nothing wrong with it as an image you know this is a this is a 700 dollar lens that i bought for 350 second hand this is a 5000 dollar lens and this is a 3500 dollar lens so yes you'd expect um the 300 dollar lens to be to be softer it has a little bit more of a soap opera sort of feel to it a little bit more blooming um in the skin compared to punchiness of the prime but uh i, I don't i don't hate it this it's not ideal for what i'm doing devil's fortune is a very dark thriller with horror overtones so this image might be not as suitable as this image but anyway moving on now we're looking at the 20 mil same distance from the actor so you know from from 35 to 20 you obviously get a much larger shot um best field of view you can see my uh, three-quarter kicker here and that's the prime when we go to the zoom um at the same length the sigma actually the prime actually looks a little smoother uh i threw this one in this is a rokinon prime i bought uh second hand for like 250 dollars and it moves when you shake it so the one of the elements has come loose because those rokinon cine primes they actually held together with glue, not screws. So you can see it's a very milky, it's a bit of a mess. You know, the bokeh is like really bright on one side. Compare that to the same on these guys, much more uniform. Chromatic aberration. Well, the resolution's okay, but we won't see that much chromatic aberration. Just see, it just uh, looks just a little bit, everything mixed in together. Like it's not holding the colors in the individual zones. So I kind of, but I didn't, I'm not planning on shooting my phone with these. I just wanted to test, you know, like a, a broken $300 lens against a um, pristine five, $3,500 lens. So now we go into the close ups. This is the 50 mil. Um, you'll start to see a lot more detail now. That's the zoom, which is, you know, just goes to show how sharp um, the Sigma zooms are. You go into 300% and you see, you know, glorious sharpness in the eyes, beautiful, you know, separation. Um, something, this is the first time we can talk about this. So in the Sigma zoom, when you go below 2.8, the bokeh takes on this sort of cat's eye shape. Um, I'm not sure what the reason behind that is. We compare it to the, oh, I didn't have a Sigma um, 50 mil. So that's my 50 mil on the zoom. And then I went, I looked at my L series prime. Um, that's the, well, it's not, it's the 1.4. It's not that 1.2. It's not really L series, but you see that the bokeh on this um, is not circular. It's rectangular because of the blades of the iris. Then we get to the 24 to 70. This is at 2.8. Yeah, two eight going up to um, ISO four hundred. This is an L series lens. Nice circular bokeh, a um, little hot on the edges, but yeah, nothing like you know this craziness of this. Um, I actually quite like it. It's uh, it lo almost looks anamorphic. Becomes this cat's eye cat's eye shape. We'll see a little bit more later when we get into the eighty five mils. Um, but color wise between these two, the I think the you know. This is almost too sharp and hard and uh, and punchy, the L prime. This is a much nicer, much more cosmetic image. Um, then we have the tw 24 to 70 is a little better, a little bit more mixed, a little closer to the zoom because you can't go so wide. Um, we're not getting anything like that F2 on the, um, the Sigma. Okay, now we get into the primes. This is the Sigma 85 mil prime, just you know, stunning. I really like this image. Then we have the 50 to 100 zoom set to 85. As you can see, it's like actually a little closer. Maybe she moved or maybe I moved the camera, but almost the same image in the face. But look at the bokeh here, up to 300%. So this is the prime. You get these crazy um, cat's eye, cat's eye bokeh effects um, in the zoom, uh, still at only at F2, that's wide open, um, which again, I like. I have a Rokinon, the cheap Rokinon primes, and again, the face, what's in focus is nice. I don't mind that at all. I actually don't even mind the drop-off in focus. Um, it's pretty smooth. But then when we get into the bokeh, we get this chromatic aberration. So the edge of the bokeh is sort of has like a, 
a green uh, and sometimes purple halo around it. Like compare that to the the cleanness of the um, Sigma Zoom, Sigma Prime, sorry. And even the Zoom, while it's it does have that cat's eye shape, it's nothing like. Look at the Rokinon. That's 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 not that's not particularly good. Uh, but hey, this is you know. $280 lens is a $3,500 lens. Um, the colors are a little greener, a um, little less purple. I think I was stopping it down there. Well, what do you know? Wide open? Look at that. If I go between, I think there's F2. If I go all the way to 1.5, you get that same um, kind of cat's eye effect, but you still get that chromatic aberration, that, that green ring around the outside of the bokeh halo. So. Because of that chromatic aberration test on the um, the Rokinon, what I wanted to do is uh, see how things clip out into white. Um, what are we? ISO 100 and two stops of ND. So this was, I was there's a lot of brightness back here. So you see where her hair clips into nothing on the Rokinon uh, on the cheap lens. You get all this kind of nasty um, nasty colors coming in, where on the um, What's this one? This is the this is the Ape Sigma Prime. You get none of that stuff. It's really clean. So this is the Rokinon with the with the green um, fringing, and this is the Sigma with with holding much more detail and nicer roll off of color. And then this must be the zoom. There's a color cast, a green color cast across the whole image. Now this could be my particular 85. Um, the, the problem with the Rokinons is they're not really consistent across um, sets or across lenses. It could be I've had it for a few years, so maybe the maybe the glue is starting to melt. But really, I think it's what you're really getting in your upgrade, um, paying ten times the amount for a lens, is all these little things that add up to a to a better image overall. So no chromatic aberration, a um, little punchier, a faster lens, more accurately um, t one point five, and then with the zoom which is actually my favorite of all these, um, you get, you know, a, a less, less contrasty image, um, a really nice, good looking colors overall. And then, you know, the other advantage is that you, you can find your frame with just the turn of the, of the lens barrel. You can zoom in and out. The Sigma Cine zooms aren't full frame. The two I had, the 18 to 35 and the um, 50 to 100. They're super 35, so they fit great on the C200. The Sigma Cine zooms are full frame, so they're you know future proofed in that sense. So that was our look at the difference between the Sigma zooms and primes. Um, I have other lenses to test. I also want to see if I want to do anamorphic. Um, that's not my favorite thing, but uh, there may be a reason to go down that path. Generally, when I do lens tests like this, there's um, there's always one or two surprises, and there's always one or two things that you think will be way different than art. I have, you know, a dedicated um, 17 inch monitor here um, that's color corrected, uh, much, un very much unlike uh, color grading inside the IMAX screen because it's very hard to calibrate because the programs use it for their user interface and as a result, they mess with the colors a lot. What, I'm, uh, what I do need to do tests of at some point is, you know, a 65 inch, 70 inch um, screen because I guess you know we're not really preparing for a cinematic release that that'd be nice on, in, on a big you know 40 foot screen but we're definitely gonna um, be aiming for streaming services like Netflix and Amazon and I want to know what the difference is between you know a 5k screen like this and a 4k much larger screen um, how it presents what the what the colors are like what the brightness is like um, and how how these lenses resolve on the the, the destination of this film. Thanks very much for watching. I will see you next time.